Use the tabular representation of f in table 7 to create a table for the inverse function of x. All right, so what they gave us here was they gave us a, a table that represents the um, non-inverse function, okay, of x. Now what we can do is we can simply then, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll create the table here quickly, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to change the notation just ever so slightly, okay? Boom, 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 and we'll go like this, okay? Now, what we can do is uh, we can look at this in a couple of ways, okay? I can write this technically like this, inverse function of x, and then I can write my x here, okay? That's the technical way to view it. However, I think how I'm going to explain it is going to be like this. So just bear with me for a second, and then I'm just simply going to copy the values, okay? Because I just think it's easier to view this way, personally. All right. So... Go back to this. You know what I think about f of x. I just like to call it y. Okay? So now what's going to happen is what I'm going to do, okay, is I know when I have to plot my inverse function, the x's and the y's have to switch, right? I get a whole we, part of this playlist. Check out any of the ones prior, like the prior six problems. All right? We went through this in detail. So all that's going to happen is that the x value and the y values will change. All right? So in other words, whatever, whatever this... I'll highlight this in blue. Whatever this column is here, or not, well, that's, Andrew, that's not a column, that's a row. Whatever that row represents there, okay, will basically become the row here, okay? And whatever the top row is here then will become the bottom row here, okay? Now, when you do this, you're going to put a 1 there and a 3 here, a 4 there and a 6 there, a 7 there and a 9 there, a 13 there and a 12 there, a 16 there and a 14 there, okay? Hopefully, nope, you screwed that up. So I was like, you know, hopefully I didn't make a mistake, and then as I was thinking, I hope I don't make a mistake, I made the mistake. That's because you get distracted, right? So focus on what you're doing. Don't think too far in advance. Um, anyway, all right, so hopefully everything is, is uh, lining up. So 1, 4, 7, okay, 1, 4, 7, yes, all right. So basically now, what's going to happen with these? Well, technically what I can do, well, not technically, but what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to change it, is that this is the blue Y value, right, from the original, and then this represents now the black X value. However, though, I'm not going to call this Y anymore and call that X. I can't. What happens is that the X values and the Y values technically switch. So... What this is going to then become is not y, but it's going to be now the new x value. I left it in blue to show you that the y's are becoming the x's. And I'm going to leave this in black to show you that the x's are becoming the y's. Okay? This is now the table for the inverse function. Now, all you have to do is just translate it to this now. Okay? So, literally just recopy it. 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9... 12, 13, 16, 14. Okay, this is the answer right here. All right, with the proper notation now. And all you might say, well, why did you go through all that? The reason why I went through that is because sometimes when you look at this X and you look at this, you think that they're the same, but they're not. They're the inverses of one another. So this blue Y became that blue X. All right. So in, in, in explaining it, that helps. But in practicality, all you really have to do here is literally just, if I erase this, Right, just go like, you know, just make a new table, put a little minus one there, and then just flop these values, switch them. You know, and that's how you do it quickly, but, you know, trying to maybe explain it. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. All right. Um, man, I'm tired. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right, take care.